I have been waiting all day to get home and check this out. Uh, my big shipment of speakers and some wire arrived today. So this video we're going to be talking about speakers. This is almost everything. I've got a few more things coming in the mail. But let's go ahead and open these up, take a look at them, and we'll talk about some speakers. My name is Caden, and I'm a computer engineer by trade, working full-time as a software developer. I've always enjoyed doing DIY projects, and after my channel started to get popular over my whole home audio projects, I decided to make this episode series. So come along this journey as I show you from start to finish how I'm installing whole home audio into my existing two-story house. What we have here are four different things. So we've got three different types of speakers and I've got the wire. So those are the four different products that I have here. So we're gonna get into each one of these. So we have a pair of outdoor speakers. I'm especially excited about these because these have a passive radiator on the back which is to produce more bass when you're outside. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We've got our two pair speaker wire. I'm still waiting on some uh, four pair speaker wire to come and I'm, I hope this is enough wire. I'm a little concerned that I didn't buy enough but I guess we'll just have to find out. And then I've got uh, two way enclosed ceiling speakers so we're gonna talk about why I've got these enclosed ones. And then we've got the um, open back one. So these two are this are almost the exact same except these are enclosed. So we're going to talk about why I picked what I picked, why I use Dayton Audio because that's the brand that I uh, really really love. And then I'm I'm actually still waiting on a dual voice coil ceiling speaker. So we're going to talk about that. I'm waiting on one dual voice coil speaker that's going to be used in the bathroom, the kids bathroom upstairs and then yeah just waiting on the other the four pair of wire so one speaker and some wire otherwise I think we've got everything and we're ready to rock and roll so I'm going to open up each one of these boxes I'm gonna set out the speakers and then we will do a little bit more talking about these quick before we get more into these speakers I just wanted to just briefly touch on the cabling um, you'll find as you're shopping around there's many 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 different types of cable you'll find that one cable looks the exact same as another one and it's half the cost um, so here's just my two cents take this for what it's worth this is just my opinion so if you think you found something else that's better or works better for you then good for you go for it um, so I prefer, so the cheaper stuff that you'll find, you'll see what's called CCA, and it stands for copper clad aluminum. And what that is, is actually aluminum wiring, which has copper coated around it. Um, because typically copper is, is the best conductor of electricity. That's why that um, your house has copper wiring. That's why, you know, speaker cable is copper. That's why they use copper and motors and all this other stuff. 
Um, so what they will do to save money, because aluminum is cheaper, is they will actually make the, the main part of the speaker cable will be copper, I mean sorry, aluminum with a copper coating around it. Um, I personally just try to stay away from copper clad aluminum. Now if you were running speakers for you know a, a surround sound system you know like a 5.1 channel where you're literally going like 20 feet or you know just here and there around your basement I would probably be okay using CCA cable for that but when I start running maybe in walls or in ceilings in the attic I'm going hundreds of feet uh, even more than 50 feet honestly I'm not gonna deal with copper clad aluminum I want if I'm putting something in my house or somebody else's house I want to put quality cable in there and I don't want to have to worry if there's ever gonna be problems chances are you'd be alright but again I'm I'm not gonna deal with it so I used OFC also known as oxygen free copper basically it's 99.99 percent real copper so that's what I try to do so I'll, I'll quit talking about that and I just want to briefly touch on the size of the wiring the gauge of the wire so the higher the gauge so uh, 16 18 22 the higher number you go the smaller the diameter of wire um, the longer you run your cable the bigger the diameter you need because as your cable gets longer and longer you will start to lose uh, you know voltage you'll start to lose voltage that your speaker is sending out so by the time you get down to the end of the line um, it's not going to be the same so you, there's loss that happens in the cable so to reduce that loss you need bigger thicker cable um, so that's I just wanted to explain that that generally that's what's going on so you need to think about how far are you running your speakers do you have a small house and you only have to go you know no run is more than 50 feet if that's the case then you can get away with 16 gauge speaker wire and you'll be fine um, if you are going 80 to 100 feet uh, as a max length to like any one of your speakers then I would definitely recommend you need 14 gauge wire and if you are going over 100 feet um, I would recommend that you need 12 gauge wire if you have no clue at all this is just a general recommendation that I have um, done and it works it, it has seemed to work um, if you have zero idea what gauge wire you need just get 14 14 in my opinion is just a good middle ground gauge of wire it's not too thin it's not too thick so just get 14 gauge wire that's what I went with here I have um, so it's it's one cable in a jack it's, it's one like jacketed cable with two actual um, cables inside of it so this is called two conductor wire I'm waiting on four conductor wire to come in the mail because when I uh, run the cable into this basement for these speakers from the attic um, I want to just pull one cable because it'll just be a whole lot easier to manhandle so I just bought a 100 foot uh, roll of four conductor wire so I'll pull one roll or one cable which will have all four and four cables because I have a left speaker and a right speaker each speaker has a positive and a negative so that's four four wires so that's why I'm waiting on the four conductor otherwise uh, typically in this um, whole home audio amp that I'm using two conductor is pretty much all that you'll ever need in this type of a system that's because this amplifier so again check my channel I've got more videos about whole home audio and the sound Avo whole home audio amp which is the probably the best amp in my opinion that your money can buy uh, they use digital keypads so that means you don't have to run um, uh, speaker wire to the keypad like you would an older analog type system so these are digital keypads so that's why you don't need anything more for this type of a system than just a two conductor wire so I bought uh, two rolls I bought two rolls of speaker cable that's because I want to as I'm running my zones I would prefer to run two cables at a time just to try to get done faster so if I'm gonna be you know 
taking one to one speaker and one to another, I'll just try to pull two cables at a time. So that's why I have two rolls. Each one of these is 250 feet. I have a feeling I'm probably uh, may not have enough, but we'll find out. But um, rather than buying one roll of 500, I bought two 250 feet. So I think that's enough on cable. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, but let's get into these speakers. Honestly, I'm just gonna start right in with the one that I'm the most excited about, which are these outdoor speakers. So these are relatively new in the Dayton Audio lineup. So first of all, the reason why I choose Dayton Audio is not because I don't like any of the other brands. There's you know all those other name brand, they have good stuff, but that's the problem is you pay for the name brand. But what Dayton Audio has done is they've engineered these their speakers. They've done their research and honestly they're using super high quality components and they're manufacturing these with the same level of quality that the big name brands are. And what you're getting is a discounted speaker because you're not paying for a name brand. You know, there you know, there's no markup for, for Dayton Audio, but if you're buying Polk or Bose or you know any of those other name brand stuff, you're getting good quality, but you're also paying for a name brand. And especially for ceiling speakers where you don't see any kind of a name brand on them, there's no reason, in my opinion, to, to be paying for a name brand. So I love Dayton Audio, and I consider you guys to check them out, but also at the same time, I'm not opposed to other brands as well. I think there's also other good brands out there, but. I love Dayton Audio, but I'm especially excited about this speaker. This is their brand new um, outdoor speaker. So this is actually um, waterproof. You can actually spray this down with a garden hose. And But the most exciting feature about this is the base radiator that's on the back. And so what this is, is this will move, this will move with the music. And I don't know if you can hear this, but um, I'll, and I'll, I think I'll try to play the video that they have that kind of shows this in action. But this is supposed to produce um, those awesome lows that you know you're looking for when you're outside, when you're you know having a barbecue or whatever. You're looking for that deep quality sound, and that's what this base radiator is supposed to do. So uh, I I tried out uh, or I, in my last house. So if you've not seen my whole home audio video that I did like two years ago. Um, in the house that I initially put it in, and we sold that and bought this house. I used like their generation one speaker of this that did not have the base radiator, and they sounded so good. I loved how they sounded outside. And so the fact that uh, they're not making those anymore and they're basically replacing them with this, I'm just super excited to hear how these sound. You can mount them vertically, so this piece here moves. So you can mount them uh, vertically or horizontally. I think I'm gonna go with the, the horizontal mount. But these are also 70 volt compatible. So I don't know if you know anything about 70 volt, but these are 70 volt compatible. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but uh, for this whole home audio system that we're installing and most of the ones that you'll use, they're not 70 volt, they'll be the, you know eight ohm, eight ohm systems. But if we take a look here in the back, these side pieces come off. So this is where you make your speaker connections and then you've got your selector here. So you take a screwdriver and there's an arrow on the side, but you uh, make your selection here and you can turn it. So right now it's set to the eight ohm setting, but you can have it on five, 10, 20, and 40 watts and two and a half watts. So you've got several different options there. So these are very versatile, waterproof, um, lots of different applications. So I cannot wait to hear how these sound. And these come in a pair. So there's another one in here. <clears throat> so next up is I've got two enclosed speakers. So these are purchased um, in single units. And so I've got another one here. Whereas these ceiling speakers, these are purchased as a pair. And so these already have an enclosure 
completely built around it. So what you're gonna get with these is a much better uh, response with your lows. So you're gonna hear the lows actually like resonate down because with these, it's an open back. And so these, you lose some lows in the ceiling. And so why, why wouldn't I just go with all of these? And there's a couple different reasons. For one, these are twice as expensive. So these are about $48 at the time of this video. They're about $48 um, per pair. Um, so, you know, 20, like 25, let's just round it, make round numbers, $25 per speaker. Whereas this is like $50 for this one. So cost is a, is a thing, you know, is an issue. That's one reason why I'm not using these all around the house. And especially when I have, uh, you know, nine or, or 10, 10 or 11 zones, these will get expensive fast. So that's one reason why. The other reason is look at the size comparison here. Um, I personally don't like um, having such huge speakers everywhere in the house. And so I, that's why I personally love the six and a half inch size. The ceiling speakers that are down here are, are eight inch. And so I prefer the look of the six and a half inch typically everywhere. That, that's just a, a personal opinion. But these, these have, you know, these are meant for large ceilings. And so why I'm using two of these and maybe down the road, I'd like to get a third, but where I have upstairs the 17 foot ceiling, that's where I need, you know, a better sounding speaker because I feel like these probably would just get lost, you know, in the, in the attic. You just, I feel like you wouldn't hear them very much. So I'm using these because of the ceiling height. Why? Because it's so tall. So let's, you can use a you know small flathead screwdriver and you can pry it the grill up and so that's how you get these out so let's take a look at these There we have it. So if you caught what I said earlier on before we started talking about these, I said that these two were essentially the exact same thing with the exception that these are enclosed. Well, so you might've been wondering how are they the same thing when this is so much bigger? And the reason why it's so much bigger is because this is actually a ported enclosure. So you can see right here, we've got the ports, which is where we should be hearing more of those lows, you know, come out. So it's a, enclosed with two ports right here. That's why it's a bigger enclosure because you need the speaker grill to cover that so you can't see that. Otherwise, this um, is, is the same speaker as this. So there you have it. So the last thing that I wanted to mention here, and if you guys have any questions about speakers or uh, you know how, how things hook up, if you have any questions, you know, Drop them in the comments and I, one thing about my channel is that I, I seriously try to respond to every comment you know, that I get. I, I really do try to respond to, to everything. Um, but one thing I did want to mention before I think I wrap this one up is these speakers that I have here, these are all single voice coil speakers. And so maybe, maybe you've heard of dual voice coil, maybe you haven't, that's okay if you haven't. But in every zone that we're, ha that we're having, we are gonna have at least two speakers. And that's because you typically have a left and a right speaker. And so that's why these come in pairs is because you're usually doing one on the left, one on the right. So um, these are all single voice coils. That means that each speaker has a positive and a negative. But for the bathroom upstairs, it's, it's a small bathroom and I, I have been going back and forth as to if I was gonna be doing two speakers in that bathroom or one speaker. And actually somebody commented on one of my videos and said I should consider a dual voice coil ceiling speaker. And so after doing some looking, that, that's what I went ahead and purchased. And so I'm waiting on a dual voice coil version of this to come in the mail. But 
what that will have is it will have two voice coils, so I'll have another set of terminals on this side. And so you might be asking, why would I need that? And, and that's because um, when you have two speakers in a zone, a left and a right, that's called stereo sound. So you're hearing two channels. And so that's kind of how, it, if you ever listen to music, that might sound like it travels from one ear to the other, word, other. that's because you're hearing the stereo sound of that music. So um, I'm going to have one speaker is what I determined. I'm going to start out with one, and if I don't like the way it sounds, I'll, I may add the second one. But I'm going to add one dual voice coil speaker. And so my options, you, in audio, that's the other thing you'll learn is in audio, you can do things 50 different ways and achieve the same thing. You know, you can have, you can wire these, you know, in parallel and series, and there's all kinds of crazy ways that you can achieve things. And so um, you'll figure out that there's so many different ways to do things. And so two ways that I could approach that bathroom upstairs is that I could have one of these and I could run my whole home audio amplifier in mono mode. And what that means is that it knows that I only have one speaker and it's going to send the signal out in mono mode. Um, what, what that means is basically you're not getting the stereo, you're not getting the left and the right. So you're actually gonna be losing some of the audio. And um, I, I didn't really want to do that. And so that's where I started reading up about these dual voice coil uh, ceiling speakers. So what that means is that this one speaker will basically have two of these. So you'll there's one that'll be kind of pushed over here and one that'll be pushed over here. And you actually get the stereo sound out of one ceiling speaker. So you're not missing as much as what you would in, in mono mode. And so that's what I'm going with. I'm going to go with one ceiling speaker above the shower and these are moisture resistant so these are these are super awesome for even above showers you don't have to worry about damaging these because these are moisture resistant um, they're not weather resistant like the outdoor speakers so these are not outdoor speakers but these are perfectly fine to be above showers and so um, yeah I'm going with a, a dual voice coil so that way I can get a stereo sound above the shower so uh, we'll get more into that as we actually do the installation of these. But um, I think that kind of wraps it up. I just wanted to kind of just talk about speakers and I, I'm trying not to make it too long because we could go on and on and on about all kinds of different stuff. But I just kind of wanted to talk about uh, my setup, why I chose what I did. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching this one and we'll see you on the next one.